Hello, Hello guys. guys. So uh, this week we've um, not been working on it too much apart from what you've uh, seen, but we are going to do a sort of technical explanation of what bits we've got so far because we haven't covered it much. You might be hearing us talking about things like navigation board and not actually being able to include what we're talking about, but hopefully in the, this week you might have some idea. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about one of the most important parts of our CPU, the program counter, which is what lets the CPU know what instructions to run. So, because we're building it on a hardware architecture, we have a instruction memory which uh, lists the instructions that have to be run in sequential order. So that looks something like this. Um, so we'll have a variety of instructions in there, such as add, subtract, uh, etc. So as you go through the program counter, you run an instruction such as this add instruction, and after you run it, you increment the program counter by one, which means that the next instruction you run will be the next instruction in the instruction memory. One of the difficult things we've had with making the program counter is making it so that it's programmable. Uh, that means that we can change its value at any point. And then we have that so that we can perform subroutine kind of things. So sort of when we jump, jump around in our instruction memory. So for example, our next instruction after this might be um, jump to, I don't know, um, instruction 10. And then we have some space, and then the program counter will start executing the instructions from instruction 10. So for example, we might start again with add 7, subtract 6, whatever. Um, so that's what makes the program counter more complicated, and that's some of the circuitry which I'll be showing you in just a second. Um, to make the program count increment by one, we use a half adder, which is slightly, well, loosely based on Rose full adder here. Um, it's, using sort of the, it's again using the ripple adder structure, um, but because we're always adding a constant one into it, we don't need to have the B input, um, and we can tie the C in to one from the start, which means you have a much reduced circuitry. Um, so it ends up looking something like this. So, you have your first character, um, and you have your chi naught. So the first thing is to zor them together, um, which gives you the sum of the first digit. The next thing is to and them together to work out what the carry is going to be for the next digit. So send both those through an and gate, and that gives you the carry for the next digits. Then we have our um, digit, well, bit one, which would be the second digit. Uh, and we send that through with a saw gate with these two. You, see, you can see how it's ripping as it builds down. So, and again, we take both of these through an AND gate to get the carry for the next bit. I think that's everything on the board, so I'll now just show you the circuitry that we use to do that. So these two boards here are the two boards that we use for incrementing the program counter, storing the program counter, and processing jumps. So here we have a display unit for the program counter which displays it in binary. Um, we've got a 74574 four here which is the 8-bit flip-flop. Um, when clocked, well, the, the outputs on this have been sent through this bus up here to the input of this board, which uses the circuit that I showed previously, the half adder, which uses an XOR gate and an AND gate to always add one to an 8-bit number, similar to a ripple add, full ripple adder. Um, this increments the value that's input by one and outputs it here um, down to the plus one transceiver. We will have another input to this jump transceiver here. Um, so that's if we wanted, you know, we'll put a value on there if we wanted to jump to a different instruction in the instruction register. Um, so we have a control bit here which is knotted by this transistor here so that only one of these two transceivers receives a zero on its active low enabling the output. Which 
go and fire this bus here takes it into the input of the 74574, which is then clocked via this control wire. The reason that is useful is because these two chips here are transceivers which together act as a multiplexer, meaning that we can decide which input is actually sent out and used in the uh, register which has the pro current value in the program counter. I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of the program counter actually incrementing. Um, we do have a small issue with switch bounce, which is when the switch is released, the contacts um, sort of jump up and down and make multiple connections, which triggers the circuit many times because of course, TTL is very quick. Um, but still, when I press this button over here, you'll see that we start off with fairly small values. Um, and every time we clock it, the numbers are getting bigger. Um, just not by one each time. So, there you are. Quick demonstration of the program counter incre incrementing. That small issue is a mechanical issue, and as soon as we replace that with an oscillator to actually make our CPU clock by itself, um, that won't then be an issue. You know, we won't be jumping around completely randomly in our instruction memory.